the potatoes are done. I just pulled them out. It took maybe 15, maybe 20 minutes to cook them. Um, so now I have my leftover grease from when we did bacon last time. I have very few tools in the kitchen, but they all work really well for us. So we don't need a huge number of tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do eggs first and then I do bacon and then I will do the potatoes. And the reason for that is so that things aren't sticking to each other. Last time I cooked on this, it was pancakes. So I'm going to go ahead and get breakfast done. The girls are getting antsy for it. I wanted to do a bigger, well, I needed to do a bigger breakfast this morning because John got bacon. And um, yeah. so I need to wipe down my counter a little bit. I like to keep my bowl here full of soapy water and that way even though it's cold I, I can kind of clean up as I go so that I'm not overtaking my own space with my own mess so that happens really easily in an RV that you just kind of get overwhelmed with Clutter. anything anything that you leave down very quickly is in the way so go ahead and make eggs And I do have to do it in stages because even if I had more pans, they wouldn't all fit on the stove at the same time. And so a staged breakfast is a good breakfast in the RV. <laughs> I have the four plates here that as the eggs are cooked, I can put them onto the plates so that I don't have an extra plate here that's eggs in my way. A staged breakfast, is that like a staged moon landing? I don't know, is it? A fake breakfast is a good breakfast. The other thing is, it is hard to get the kitchen perfectly level. And so when I cook anything on the skillet, I will, I'll turn the pan halfway through so that everything on the top gets moved to the bottom and it makes everything cook a little more evenly. And if I keep the um, heat really low, I can put a lot more eggs in and it's almost like they're poached instead of fried and it just, they turn out pretty good. So I'm gonna make sure my heat is nice and low. Is that enough for us? Probably need a couple more. So I'll move this right now so that I can operate, wash my hands off a little bit. Usually, usually I would have my salt at the back of my stove, but because I have this, the oven on, the way that the heat vents is up through the back of the, of the actual range. And so if I have my wooden box back there, it's a fire hazard. I have some glass jars back there, they're okay, but I don't want anything combustible back there because it does get really, really hot. So this is my salt box. And now I'm just going to wait for that to be done. <clears throat> My potatoes are still warm. I try to take them out just before they're cooked. If they still have a slightly uncooked center, then you have less waste because it solidifies instead of having that skin pull away from what's inside. So for the cost of one of those bags of like frozen, already hashed up hash browns, you can buy a uh, almost like a 50 pound box. If you were feeding a large family, um, one 10 pound bag of potatoes is about $2. And so by having these potatoes and using them this way, I have them for storage. I don't have to refrigerate them at all. They don't have to be refrigerated. This is where I keep them, right here in this little drawer. And they stay nice and cool. And then I just need a grater. They need to be, if, if you try to do them raw, they turn into this black nasty thing um, and you have to use a lot of oil to make them work this way. You just need a lightly seasoned pan and just a grater. So what she's saying is you pre-bake them. Yeah, you pre-bake them. It's better if they've cooled down first, but I didn't have any cooked for this morning, so I have just baked them. They're still a little bit warm. In which case they crumble about as much as they shred. Yeah, but, but it's, I mean. But it's good. I mean, they still taste the same. Yeah, they still taste good. 
I don't know. They probably taste a little better if they cooled because then you get some, like a crust on them mm -hmm. that's a little a little nicer. For our family, it takes two potatoes for enough for our family, and the reason it only takes two is that I like to put cheese on them, and that adds a little more protein. It kind of fills everybody up a little bit more than if I just do regular. Um, Okay, so the, the minute I'm finished with it, I put it in here. I wipe it down really quick because otherwise it crusts up and holds on. So that's why I like to keep a little container of water already going. And this one, the others, it's not so bad. You just kind of rinse them off in the water really quick. But this one kind of needs to be washed down as you cook with it because all those little slicers hold on to food. And so it's easiest with that one just to just to wash as you go. So I'm going to spread those out. It would have been better if I'd spread the oil out a little more because it's going to be a little bit concentrated. Again, RVs tilt, and so it's tilted, which means that on one end you're going to get a lot of oil in your potatoes, and on the other end you won't have any. Um, so there's that. I'm going to wait for it to brown a little bit. No, I'm going to check on the muffins. And they look like they're done. <laughs> I use washcloths as my hot pad holders and I use my um, cutting board. Dry washcloths. Yeah, a dry washcloth is a very good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and pull out my muffins. Um, yeah, a, a very dry washcloth. Very good. So those are perfect. And I'm gonna put them on here so they don't burn my uh, table. So we're just about ready. Now cheese will keep like really indefinitely for you. Without refrigeration. Without refrigeration, unless it gets starts to get really warm. And so because we're slightly warm where we are, it's lost a little bit of its texture. It's a little bit melty and gummy, but as far as the taste, that doesn't hurt anything. It, I just won't be able to grate it. Instead of being able to grate it, I need to just slice it. So you can see it's a little bit oily on the surface. Again, that doesn't hurt anything. The bacteria in the cheese itself, the mold in the cheese itself has preserved it to the point where it's safe to eat. It just, for our visual preferences, um, who are used to that kind of thing, see, you can see there's a little bit of mold growing on the inside, just a little bit, and that's just because I have it closed. So if I were to open it a little bit, it could dry out. So I'm gonna turn it like that so the other side can cook too. See how that, that downward side didn't brown as well? It just didn't have as much access to oil or as much access to heat. So I'm going to move everything towards the middle so that my cheese doesn't melt through and burn on the griddle. So it's kind of cushioning, all the potatoes are kind of cushioning the cheese from going through because I, I really don't want to have to clean cheese off my griddle. And. I won't call the kids in until I have everything ready because it's really hard to work in here when you have more than one person. Including your dang cameraman. Get no, out. You're doing just fine. You're not in my walkway. <laughs> so I'm going to get them their water. And we do have some electronic equipment here, so we have to be a little bit cautious about how much water we give them in placement. So, I've got my tea right there, and then I'm just going to put, where's my other lid? Where did I put my other lid? Okay, so I do have two pans, but I have one of them put up because I don't use it a whole lot, so it has storage stuff in it. So, helping it melt a little faster, I'm going to put the lid on. You can show them what I've got in the You're cupboard. Sure this is vanilla. Because she's a day drinker. So if you want to make your own vanilla, you take vanilla beans and you put it inside um, some kind of vodka. It doesn't have to be Smirnoff. So that's that. I have the things that I don't use a whole lot have other things stacked on top of them. The things that I use a lot, I have kind of single stacked or I have them down here. 
So, usually I have my pressure cooker in the oven for storage. The tea kettle always stays out because we're always making tea. Okay, so I'm going to put my lid back on my bacon grease and I will add this bacon. Oh, it's hard to cook when you have multiple things you're cooking in here. Okay, I wanted to clean this out though. John wishes that I had a lot more pans in here, but the problem is when I have too many pans in here, I don't actually have room to store food. And while right now we're in a really, really nice space because we're right next door to the grocery store, usually we're not. And so I have to store a lot of flowers and a lot of canned foods and pans take up a huge amount of space. I could, I could stack food inside the pans to save on space, but then every time I cook, I would have to unpack the pans. And so um, I have kiboshed John's desire for multiple. I did bring an extra uh, soup pan and um, we have been able to use it. And the reason I brought the other soup pan that I did is that it's cast iron with a lid and which means that I can put it in the oven because I can't, I can't put my pressure cooker in the oven. It would, um, it would cook the lid. It would um, melt the seal. Yeah, it would melt everything. And so it is really good to have multi-purpose, multi-functional um, dishes, pans. Um, and it would be nice to have another cast iron. I just don't know where we put it. We brought this one because it's really low profile. And we like to make a lot of pancakes. Um, However, a 10 inch cast iron would also have. Yeah, a 10 inch would, would cast be iron would have been useful. nice because it would have had higher higher sides and it could have doubled for almost dub doubled as a saucepan. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here's the other trick. I now need to cook the bacon. Why do I need to cook the bacon even though we have enough food? Cause John wanted bacon. Because we cannot refrigerate. And so if we get any kind of meat that's raw, it has to be cooked immediately. It has to be cooked now. What, honey? Immediately, if not sooner. Yeah, because this is already starting to warm up just a tiny bit. And it's only been here for like, what, an hour? Mm, so it will be a very bacon heavy breakfast. Which is okay. We haven't had bacon for a while. Okay, as things dry off, I put them away so that I, because I use this little basket with the towel in the bottom as it holds things when we're driving, but I also use it as my um, dish drying space. Rack. It keeps the dishes out of what could be a dirty sink. Um, and then if I needed to, I could lift the whole basket out if for some reason I suddenly needed this sink. So it works really well. Okay, I was going to make you coffee. <laughs> okay, so I've got John's coffee here. Just how long till we over full? I actually guessed it just right. Nice. All right, so there's John's coffee for him. There's his. So everybody now has a drink of some kind, and these thermoses are really nice. Especially, you watch that? especially that one. You should totally pitch that one. This one is you put a. In Thermos. Yes, you put in your fresh <laughs> this is boiling a water. Cafe. <laughs> yeah, you put in your boiling water and it will still be hot. Two days later, yeah. it is the most insulated thing I have ever seen. Okay, so my oven is no longer on, so I can move my salt back to where it was. Like that. I'll wait a little bit longer before I put my pressure cooker back in. So when I'm cooking, everything comes out, and then as I can put things up, I put them back up. It's, it's, it, it makes it so that when we're done with our meal, it takes us 45 seconds because everybody just has to wash their own plate. I already have all the pans clean. I have everything else finished so that when anybody else needs to be in the kitchen, it's very simple and easy for them to just tidy up after themselves because we don't really, we don't have a lot of chores for anybody to do. Mostly, the only thing everybody needs to do is just kind of make sure that they're not they're not leaving stuff around for for, for me or John to clean up. So, so 
So I don't have a rinse water, I just turn on the water a little drip at a time. Okay. Right. And I'm going to put this in the oven because it is starting to get greasy. I'll go through and that's how I put it in. Do you want to see? Maybe too. So this is where I keep the pressure cooker, and this is where I keep the um, the skillet is under here. I could keep the cookie tins, um, the what's it called, a cookie sheet under here as well, but I find that I use it with the girls' school so that they're not losing puzzle pieces, and so it seems easier just up up with the muffin tin. And the nice thing about being in an RV is that when your house starts to get a little too warm, you just open things up. Because <laughs> it is getting warm in here. Between the oven and the stove, we hit critical mass. Critical mass. We're about to detonate. <sighs> yeah. Like a day bomb. So we're ready for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Lots of bacon this morning. <laughs>